The ESP32 microcontroller can act as a Bluetooth keyboard so you can simulate key presses on your PC. Some retro computer games can only be played by keyboard. So let's build a Bluetooth keyboard game controller. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The ESP32 microcontroller is a powerful device that can be programmed just like your trusty Arduino. It uses the same Arduino IDE and is compatible with many of the Arduino libraries. But it has a few fantastic advantages. So apart from having a dual core 32-bit processor clocked at up to 240 megahertz with 520 kilobytes of RAM and four megabytes of flash ROM, it also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. And it's this Bluetooth connection that we're going to make use of in this tutorial to make a game controller that mimics a Bluetooth keyboard. This lets us map buttons on the controller to key presses so that we can use a gamepad in some of home computer emulators that don't normally allow joystick control. Of course, the ability to send key presses to your computer, either manually or automatically, opens up a lot of possibilities. But for me, this is the first step towards a bigger game controller project that will allow a single controller to cope with most console and computer gaming needs. As an example for this game controller, I love playing old BBC microcomputer games such as Acorn Soft's Monsters, which is on the screen at the moment. Now this uses the Z, X, forward slash and apostrophe keyboard keys for the movement and D and F to dig and fill holes. Now as standard, uh, the game, like a lot of BBC games, uh, doesn't support a joystick. So it would be great if we could attach a game controller that has all the mapping set up so that buttons on, buttons on the gamepad will press the game control keys for me, and all of this then over a wireless Bluetooth connection. So to get this all set up, um, we, we first need to make sure that your Arduino IDE is ready to work with your ESP32 board. So if you haven't already got this set up, then please do have a look at the Espressive guide on how to install the ESP32 support into your Arduino IDE. Now I'll put this link down in the description below, so please do go and check that out. So once you've got that all set up, uh, we're ready to code. So for this tutorial, um, we'll use a ready-made library to do all the hard work of creating a Bluetooth connection to your PC and making it work as a keyboard. So if you go to this GitHub repository, you, you'll get to the actual library that we're going to be using. Now we need to install this into the Arduino IDE. So if you click on the green code button and select the download zip link, this will download the library as a zip archive onto your computer. So just save it somewhere sensible. We now need to import this file into our Arduino IDE. So open up your Arduino IDE and go to the sketch menu, include library, and add zip library. Then simply select the file that you've just downloaded. And once that's imported, our library has now been installed into the IDE. Now the library does come with an example sketch, which we can use to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So go to the file menu, examples, and then to the ESP32 BLE keyboard section and you'll see an example called Send Keystrokes. So just open that up. Now to start with on this example file, I'd first of all comment out the second half of the main loop code. Um, as this starts to play with our media keys uh, and then also sends a control alt delete signal to your PC. Now if we look at how this code works then, so it starts by importing the BLE keyboard library and then instantiating an instance of the class. Now once we call that objects begin method, it will start to broadcast its existence uh, and try to connect to a host. 
once we get this sketch uploaded and running. So if you now look at your computer's Bluetooth device list, you should see an ESP32 keyboard listed. So it pair with that, and then the code should recognize that it's now connected to a device and should start to execute the loop. If we look at the loop, and we'll see that the keyboard code is inside an if statement. And this is where it checks to see if that connection has been made. And of course, we only run then the loop if we have a connection. So the code simply sends a string of key presses to type the um, hello world message. It then waits for one second, then presses the return key, then waits for another second, and then repeats this over and over again. So let's test to see if this works. So we simply need to connect the ESP32 board via the USB connection to your computer to get this to run. Um, there, there's no additional hardware needed for this particular sketch. Now, don't forget when you upload the sketch to an ESP32 board, make sure that when you get to the actual uploading to the board um, section that you hold in the boot button on the ESP32 to make sure that it goes into the right mode for uploading sketches. So once that's all uploaded, it will start to run. And we now just simply open up a, a something like Notepad um, in your PC. If we make sure that it has focus, then we should find that the key presses coming from our ESP32 will start to show up in Notepad. Again, if you don't see anything happening, uh, do make sure that you have the Bluetooth connection um, running so that we actually are receiving the keystrokes. So that should all confirm that our ESP32 is able to mimic a Bluetooth keyboard, connect to your PC and send some keystrokes. So now we need to put together a bit of a gamepad and see how we can then get that to run our games. Now do make sure you disconnect the Bluetooth keyboard, otherwise this example sketch will start typing over everything you're doing. Now I've already been working on a gamepad as part of a Raspberry Pi powered handheld console. So I've already got a number of switches wired up and ready to go. Uh, and I'll put some links in the description down below if you want to go and have a look at that particular project. But, but really all you need are some push buttons to use as the inputs. Now on my little setup here, I've got the switches wired up with a common ground connection on one side. Um, of each button uh, and then that lets me pull the inputs on the ESP32 low by just pressing any of these buttons. So I, I'm going to set the inputs on my ESP32 um, using their internal pull resistors and that way we get a very simple way of connecting the buttons without having to use any extra pull up or, or pull down resistors. So I'm going to wire up my gamepad buttons um, to the inputs as shown in this table. Now to play the BBC Monsters game, I'll need to map these buttons to these keys. So at the moment um, in the code we're going to write, I'm, I'm going to hard code this mapping, uh, but eventually I'll work on a more complex controller, which will allow us to set up selectable game mappings uh, and even create and save our own mappings directly on the controller. So if I load up the sketch we're going to use, and again, I'll put all the code to this um, and make it available on my Bytes and Bits website. So, so please do check the description below for that link. Uh, and obviously don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel uh, for more videos and tutorials, both in this series and in lots of other things that I cover. So looking at the game controller code, you'll, you'll see the mapping table implemented as a, as a set of three arrays with each element matching the elements in the other two. So if we, if we start at the top of this thing, so again, um, I'm in this one telling the library to use the nimble Bluetooth driver. So this is optional, um, but it does save a lot of memory on the ESP32. Uh, the, the nimble Bluetooth driver is a replacement for the standard Bluetooth driver. Um, and, and if you want to use that, of course, you'll need to load it into the Arduino um, through the library manager. So if you bring up library manager uh, and then just search for nimble, 
you should find the Nimble BLE um, Bluetooth library and then just simply install that. And as I said, this is a, a, a bit of a streamlined version of the Bluetooth library, which will save um, quite a bit of memory on the ESP32 device. So, so it's, it, it is well worth using this version. So next, as I say, I, I'm defining the inputs which I'm going to be using uh, for my buttons. Looking at the arrays then, so the key states array, um, this will keep track of which buttons are currently depressed. So, so we can work out um, as we monitor the buttons, the actual physical buttons, whether we need to then depress or release the keys on the keyboard. The key pins array, um, that just then holds the map of the input pins. And then the key codes array, that specifies the keyboard keys that we need to press when we touch one of the buttons. Now, on this one here, note that you need to specify the unshifted keys. Uh, otherwise, the uh, Bluetooth software or the, or the keyboard software will actually recognize that it needs to send the shift key modifier along with the actual key press. And, and, and that it probably won't cause any problems, but um, it obviously means that there will be a second button being pressed with every time you press one of the buttons. So in our setup function, uh, we first of all turn on our serial monitor. We then call the set inputs function, and that, and that is the one which just simply takes each of our input pins and sets them into the um, input pull-up mode, where it turns on the ESP's internal um, pull-up resistors. So. Going further down, so I'm using a, a single shot notification flag here um, so that I can see on the serial terminal when the ESP32 has actually found a connection to my PC. And of course, uh, once, once that notification is sent, uh, we then turn off that notification flag. Uh, but the main loop then, um, all it simply does is to run through the six elements in the arrays and then ask this handle button function to work out what to do for each of the buttons. So, so looking at this function, uh, we simply receive the array index, which of course comes from that loop counter in the um, actual loop function. And that lets us um, read the data that we need. So we check, first of all, if the button is currently pressed. Uh, and remember, we're, we're pulling low when we press the button on this one. So if the button is pressed, we check if the current key state, um, and if that is not pressed, then obviously this is a new key press, so we need to send that Bluetooth signal to press the key on the keyboard. So the press method that we're using here, um, it, it leaves the key held down. So when we send a key press, as I say, that, that key will be then in the held down state. Uh, the parameter we send to the press method then can either be an ASCII character for the key, which is what we've defined in our key um, array up above, um, or there are some predefined values which will allow you to specify these special keys on the keyboard, such as shift keys and caps lock and so on. Um, but do have a look at the library code to see what those um, uh, constant values are. So then in our else statement, um, so we say if the button then is not pressed, we check the key state array to see if the keyboard key is currently pressed. So if the button on our controller has been released, we now need to release the key on the keyboard. And again, that's using the release method. And that again works exactly the same as the press method. And, and really that's all there is to it. So if we upload this to the ESP32, get it up and running, and then we start up monsters in BBEM, making sure of course that we do have our um, Bluetooth keyboard connected, we should then be able to play the game using the keypad. So, that's the Bluetooth gamepad using an ESP32 that lets you mimic any keyboard keys so you can play any of your retro home computer games um, where joysticks aren't supported or if they're very hard to set up. 
As I said earlier, this is the first step on a larger retro game controller project. So, so please do make sure you subscribe to my channel um, to get access to those videos as soon as I make them. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. So, bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.